was uh, the inaugural episode of Tone's Crib. This is Tony, and I'm here with Glenda. Hi. <laughs> What's with the sexy voice? So, yeah, we're just going to talk about like current events, whatever comes to mind. It's just two people talking. Um, the first thing, have you heard about this, this thing? They found Dominican kids, boys, that were raised as girls what? in the Dominican Republic. They were born women or girls. When they reached the age of 12, their testes drop. And all of a sudden, they become boys. Have you heard about this? No. So they were born, they were born as girls, and then when they hit puberty 12... The testicles drop? Yeah. The testicles come out, and they find out that these kids so were So they're hermaphrodites? Boys. They have the both? They're, no. They're, they're not hermaphrodites. They, they've they always had the XY chromosome, and they're not sure why this is something that happens only in the Dominican Republic. Only? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. The theory is one woman went to the island... She had a lot of children, and because it's not a large place, a lot of there was a lot of like cross reproduction going on, and the gene just carried on and on and on, and it seems to be a common thing now. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, like these kids grow up with the parents thinking, you know, this is a daughter, this is a daughter. Thirteen years old hits, things start growing, you know, where they weren't growing before. Really? Where was? Where the hell did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this was, it was reported in a BBC magazine. Are you kidding me? Yeah, Michael Mosley. Okay, that's something that I would need to, yeah, I've never have I heard of that. Yeah, I haven't either, and I know a lot of Dominican people. <laughs> <laughs> so do Imagine I. Imagine, <laughs> you, you, you have friends, and you're raised as a girl, I mean... I guess in the Dominican Republic, because everybody knows everybody, it's not that big of a deal. I have never in all my life ever heard of anything like that. Because this is not like, like with a hermaphrodite, you could choose. Well, you know, isn't it when you're born that doctor tells you, you know, you have... Yeah, but you pretty much have until puberty to choose. Oh, really? Gonna, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you got to... Like, usually a child will identify... Mm-hmm. And say this is what I am, and then you go with that. Okay, I've but seen you that. have a choice of choosing what you're gonna do. Hormone therapy um, would help that along. There was a, there was actually a girl on Twitch. You ever, you ever never used? It's like YouTube. Mm-hmm. You go on and people do their own videos. And there's a, there was a girl that went on and she was talking about her life as a hermaphrodite. She's from Jersey. Okay. And yeah, that's what she said. She said basically, the doctor tells you you have both reproductive organs Mm -hmm. and as you age you on your own identify with one and what they do is they'll give you hormones to push that along Mm -hmm. but with these kids they're not really it's not a case of having both organs because they don't there's no vagina in there it just looks like it because everything's internal yeah but once the testes drop the scrotum comes out and I guess the penis is a micro penis it has to be I would think so. Yeah, because yeah. Feel, cause it, cause you would see if it was a bulge, if it was bigger than, you know what I mean? Yeah, it has to be microphallus. It has to be small. Yeah. Like, 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 speaking from experience, <laughs> <laughs> uh, bodybuilder women uh-huh. tend to have microphallus because the, the testosterone makes it grow bigger than, you know, what you would expect it to be on a woman. Um, happy surprise. And, um... I don't yeah, know, for some reason I'm thinking back to that, that, um, that sh- I saw this shit on the internet, whatever. But the thing was, they had, like, the, the competition, the smallest penis. The smallest one, yeah. Yeah, and those things looked, re- they looked like buttons. Yeah, yeah, they yeah, it, like, it could be. It almost looked like an Audi belly button. There are women with clitorises larger than some men's that penis, I have not which is seen. amazing. I've seen it. <laughs> that I have not seen. I've, I've seen it, and you just sit there thinking, like, wow. Mm-hmm. That's wow. That's interesting. But yeah, it happens. It happens a lot. Now, you were asking 
about this guy found guilty of murdering his wife. And oh, yeah. How the hell did they figure that one out? Okay. He went camping with his wife, um, Dr. Tony Henthorne. Mm-hmm. Okay. And while they were camping, he claims she fell off a cliff. Now, this I guess this happens a lot. I'm taking a selfie. Yeah. Hey, that happened. I read about it. that happened to somebody in Grand Canyon. They fell off a cliff while taking a selfie. But it's this like, guy, the only thing that made it weird was that this guy's first wife had died while she was working on a car. The jack accidentally fell out and she was crushed by the car. Okay. And nobody looked sideways at it. At it. They just let it pass. Okay, so, so that's just a regular accident. Right. Mis- um, misfortunate. Yeah, his first okay. wife, his first wife's sister had, and it's funny because I saw this on 48 Hours, that story. Mm-hmm. And the first wife's sister was like, this guy, this is fishy. There's no way she was working on a car, first of all. Uh-huh. Like, why would she be working on a car? And then the car fell on her? <laughs> the, it doesn't make any sense. Mm-hmm. And you know, say what she likes to fix cars. Like she's like a mechanic on her spare time. It's, yeah, it doesn't. It you know doesn't. What I mean, is this is I mean, this her norm? That would have been my question. That's her norm to fix cars. Apparently, it wasn't because she didn't know how to use a jack. There you the go. Whole car fell yeah. Out of it. But uh-huh. yeah, it's it's just weird. And then it was because of that question that this one came. It's like, how does the second wife now just fall off of a cliff? This doesn't make any sense. Uh-huh. And it's funny because. It reminds me of, a, you know, there's a lot of people that go on cruises, and because of cruises in international waters, they kill their wives and dump them off the balcony of the cruise, because the cruise ship really can't really? stop. Really? Yeah, yeah, true. They don't stop in the middle of the ocean to look for someone. So you'll see there's a lot. Like, if you Google cruise ship death, you'll see there's a lot of people that just disappear off of cruise ships. Uh-huh. And then the, the you know, the spouse is like, oh, I don't know what happened. Where could she have gone? You don't know where she went. You're just thrown off the side of, you know, oh, your little yeah. terrace. And how long are you going to stay floating in the middle of the ocean like that? Not a long Yeah, time. you'll get tired. Yeah, and a cruise, ship, a cruise yeah. ship is huge. So for that cruise ship to stop, turn around, go back, and look for you, yeah, yeah. it won't happen. Especially if you don't... And depending how, how soon or what, what is it you report the person is missing. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you would have to actually report it the moment they fall over the, the mm-hmm. railing. And if you don't want to do the pushing, you're not yeah, reporting we're, anything. Yeah. You're going to let them float. Mm-hmm. And then all you have to do is go to sleep. In the morning, wake up. I can't find my wife. You got what? Basically. Seven, yeah. eight hours of ship cruising. Oh my God! She's like that bitch is floating s- somewhere. Seven, eight hours uh, there hanging out with whales. No, that's so sad. That's so sad. <laughs> no, 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 no. There's it's no so way. Wow. And it's a common thing. It happens a lot. But is it? Is it, let me ask you something. Is it normally wives, no husbands? Usually wives. Yeah. That's fucked Very up. Very rarely <laughs> is it because you know, look, if you tell your wife, if you're having a, you're in a relationship, mm. and the relationship isn't that good. And you tell your wife, hey, let's go on a cruise. And she's all happy. Oh, we're going to work it out. Well, not anymore. You'll be all suspicious now. Be like, not well, really. You, you tried yeah, to throw me on the side of the fucking ship. Yeah, but nobody thinks of that. Yeah. You know, um, but yeah, they're like, you know, oh, this is great. Maybe we could, you know, Unless work it out. Unless it's like a out. big insurance policy or some That's shit. That's another thing. On. Well, yeah. you know, you could take an insurance policy on a spouse. I guess you don't have to tell them about it. It's gambling. He did the same thing. This guy with the, with the wife that accidentally fell off the cliff. He he took. I think it was like a, a fifty thousand or five hundred thousand dollar insurance policy on his wife's life. Oh. Which is well, so how did they figure out that it, you know that he did it? They they investigated. They just went into I guess investigating, and I guess there's ways that you can tell if someone. I was like, did somebody take a selfie or some shit? I doubt it. Or somebody was happened to be in the vicinity and was like filming and. I guess a lot of well, a lot of times when you fall, like if you're pushed, you try to catch yourself, or mm-hmm. you know what I mean. You try to crawl back up, but if you fall and you just hit the floor, and just, if you're jumping, or and it's just weird. But but the guy, yeah, he's not getting away with it. He's gonna widen up 
in jail. Did you, the we were talking yesterday about that pharmaceutical guy? Which one? The one Martin Shkreli? The one that uh he took over a pharmaceutical company. Oh, no, we were company. talking about, about the, like the, the, the HIV medication. Tox, yeah, that it went from, from $13 up hill to, like, you said how much? 700 a pill. No, it's 700 a pill a now? Pill. Yeah, it went from 13 to 7 And it's funny because, you know, Anonymous, when Anonymous wants to get on someone, they do this thing called... Doxing, you've heard of this? No. But basically, they go into your past and all your documents about everything you've ever done, and they just put it out there. And it looks like the news companies are doing this now because mm-hmm. a lot of news sites went out and like started looking into this guy, and they found that he harassed like past employees and all kinds of like stalking mm-hmm. charges. And now all of a sudden, he's backtracking. He's like, no, it's not seven hundred dollars. We're gonna bring it back down. You know, uh-huh. that that that's that's like underhanded. You know, trying to make a bout face. Because at first, a lot of people were defending this guy. Like, yeah, he it's, has the right to make money. It's funny, right here, like seven hours ago, drug CEO will lower price of Daraprim after hype sparked outrage. Yeah, yeah, a lot. It's it's ridiculous. A lot of people, when AIDS first started, you heard of. A lot of people walking around with lesions. They were dying of this, like skin would flake off. You know, they would get necrotic because of the lesions. Mm-hmm. Like there was just a lot of things. It would eat the brain up, and you don't really hear of that anymore. Because that was, you know, it was that well, and the, pneumonia. They eat the brain. It was the toxo- the toxoplasmosis. Osmosis. Yeah. Yeah. It got to the point where it shows up on the skin. That's how you know you have it. Mm-hmm. And then when it gets to the point where it's eating the brain up. Mm-hmm. You know, that's when you die. And you don't hear that anymore. It doesn't happen. Yeah. Because, you know, the, I guess the insurance companies feel free of paying for these $13 a pill, but I don't know about 700 You might, you might, look, my insurance company, like, they to pay for, like, physical therapy and rehab, they will fight you on it. Well, yeah, they're limited to, like, certain amount of sessions yeah, or appointments. Yeah. Like, they'll keep, tell you 10 and, you know... I'm like, shit, I just got, like, you know, major fucking mm-hmm. surgery. What makes you think we're just going ten times I'm going to be completely healed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and then you got to fight them, like, because you got to, after the initial number, they'll give you, like, five more visits. And yeah. you got to fight them for that five visits. Yeah, not, yeah. They're not going to just give it to you. And mind you, then, this is something that you're paying into. It's not yeah. something, like, the company, like, pays for it. And then, you know, all right, nothing comes out of your check. I mean... They're garnishing your check for this shit. So yeah, yeah, even while you're in the middle of getting your surgery and your rehab and all this stuff, they're still taking money out. Mm-hmm. Like they're sending you bills. Like, could you give? Are you gonna pay this? Are you gonna pay that? And that's that's what they want. Yeah. But yeah, it's ridiculous, and you gotta fight them for it. And I kind of, I can imagine sitting down and fighting the company for a pill that costs seven hundred dollars. You imagine what your rates are gonna be. For seven hundred dollar pill, that, that's and then um, try getting insurance once you have the disease. It'll never happen. There's no way. Nowadays, we, everybody has to be insured, right? So everyone has to be insured. You'll have some type of band-aid coverage. Yeah, but it's not going to be great coverage, though. It's not going to be not at all. I'm thinking when I had, I went to an e, the ER recently and. They sent me a bill. I was like, she's like, I'm not paying for this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I went to the ER. Yeah. This is supposed to be covered. And they didn't even do anything like major. It was just look at this and look at that. And you go home and they send you bills. And it's funny because they're so quick to send you the bill. Sometimes they don't give the hospital time to adjust the payments mm-hmm. for, you know, like they'll adjust the payments for them. Yeah. And then that's when you'll get what you're supposed to pay. But they're so quick to send the bill out that you don't have time for that. And you're going to wind up paying an amount that's way more than you're supposed to pay. You won't see that money come back to you. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Well, they're pretty, yeah, they're, the claims, whenever you do a claim, the turnaround is, 
Yeah, it takes, it, yeah, yeah, it takes a minute. Yeah, they're quick to ask for their money, but they're not, 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 not quick to pay money back. But I don't feel bad for the pharmaceutical guy. He's a prick. Unbelievable. Have you, there's this, you have family that lives in, in housing, friends and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I have, I have friends that live in housing. Mm-hmm. And yeah, my grandmother lives in housing. And there was recently a case where a young girl living in housing was killed. And she went, her mother went and sued housing, the housing authority. And the lawyer for the housing authority basically said, this, this girl knew the dangers of living in housing. We are not going to pay anything out. It's mm-hmm. not our responsibility to yeah to That's care for her so or up. take care of her. Yeah, so basically, if you live in see the bull, I live in co-op. There's not security like a person here, but there's cameras that lead somewhere that someone's always watching. Yeah. So and there's always those shitty those shitty ones that you can't yeah. say shit. Everybody's all fuzzy and whatnot. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like here, they have decent cameras. Yeah. Um, but like I know from experience, like if you do something. They'll send you a letter saying, we saw you do this. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, watch out or don't let this person. Yeah, they'll watch you let people in the building. Yeah. And then comment, did you know that person? Like, ask you, did you know the person that you let in? Uh-huh. Yeah, Your building does that? Yes, they do that. Apparently so, not at these buildings. They no. don't do those types of well, things. I mean, housing, shit, they're not even responsible for their own people. If you walk into housing, there's cameras everywhere. Yeah. There's cameras I've in the seen, lobby. I mean, I've seen the, the yeah. cameras in the lobby and such, you know, the magic eye and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. and they have, they have, yes, they have that sign. And they have cameras in the elevators, which doesn't help because they're always pissed in. Mm-hmm. And there's cameras everywhere. How could you not be responsible? You have to be responsible for the people that live in your buildings. So, and the city got away with this shit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the city basically saying that they don't have a responsibility to keep you secure or to keep that building secure. Which is funny because there's always cops running around housing. When they want to get somebody or they want to grab somebody, the cops are there, no problem. Mm -hmm. But to protect someone, like I've walked through housing and I've seen like people dealing drugs on the corner, just standing there, obviously doing shit. And I've seen cops walk right past them, no problem. So, to say that cops are doing something in the house, they're not. They're not doing anything. Like, every once in a while, which is the case with this girl, once she was killed, they put a show of force. They put that tower out. You know, the little tower that a cop sits in and it goes up and it looks like Escape from New York? Yeah. Yeah, they put that up. But the thing is, it's too little too late. It doesn't really do anything for the people that got killed or the people that lived it. There's a lot of people in housing, look, there are people in housing who are not, you know, they just don't give a shit about where they live mm-hmm. or how they live. And, you know, they make it difficult for everyone else. And there's people who are, ho- who are in housing who basically, that's what they can afford, and they make the best of it. I've seen people come out and, like, mop the hallway on their own or yeah, clean up yeah. after, you know, try to keep things as clean as they can. See, I don't know. Because I remember, like, in certain buildings, they had security guards. So there were, you know, they were... In housing? Yeah. I've never. So they like, make you sign in and shit. Really? Yeah. I've never... So I, I've seen I'm that like, in, you know, like, Not all buildings, yeah. but some. So that's why I was just, you know, I'm like... Hmm, I've never seen that in housing. That's kind of... Fu- that's real fucked up. It is. It is. To think that... Because, like I said, my grandmother lives in housing. And in her... I've walked into her building... And seeing, like, people just high out of their minds. Mm-hmm. Like, like obvious, like, heroin addicts or, or like, coke addicts. Like, mm-hmm. in the lobby, like, completely blasted out of their mind. And that's not really, that's not acceptable. Like, yeah. anywhere, any building, you don't see that. Come on. Yeah. Nobody does. Like, my mom's building has a door, not, not a door, but they have security. Mm-hmm. And uh, they make sure, like, the stairways are clear. That's, no people yeah, hanging exactly. Out That's what I'm saying. Like the, like the, like the, I'm like I said, not all, but like I remember growing up. I mean, yeah. some buildings had it, and they, yeah. you know, they could clear, you know, the hallways and yeah. stair stairways of people and shit. 
Your building had for a little while a doorman, right? Or your mom's building. It still does. Oh, it yeah. still does? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I remember, I remember seeing someone standing there. Yeah. But it's like... There's always, yeah, there's always somebody there. There has to be or like some kind of... Because I know my grandma's when they try to put together like a neighborhood watch. Yeah. But like all the people on neighborhood watch were way too old to actually go out and do it. So they just like hung out in the community room. But... <laughs> they were neighborhood watching the community room? Yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah, they were hanging out playing dominoes and old people shit. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it doesn't... I don't understand how... You collect rent from people, and they live there, and living in housing is not easy. You got to make yourself available whenever they want to come by and, like, look at your apartment or check something out. Like, they'll come in and check those pipes to make sure they don't blow up on you, but they'll do it, like, whenever they feel like it. They'll come in and check the, uh, the fire, yeah. you know, the fire stuff, and it's... it's you're out there, you know, every whim, and I don't understand how they're not responsible for your safety. It just doesn't, you know, could, yeah. That's why I'm just like, really? Yeah, it makes no sense. Yeah. It, it, you know, and it's like, it's funny how every, people want. And she was a young girl, too, right? Yeah, she was very young. I think she was like 19, 20. College okay, student. College student. Yeah. It's funny, the, this is, like, people want the status of having authority over someone or mm-hmm. feeling like they're in power and they don't want the responsibility though mm-hmm. like to actually do shit you know um like you know I'm not a I'm not a fan of cops mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's funny because there's a story a couple of years ago like a few years ago there was a this guy a Russian guy in Queens and he was basically he went like on a rampage he killed some girl that basically didn't want to go out with him like he was after her and he wound up killing her he killed uh his father and he was just going around rampage stabbing people like he grabbed some guy out of a van and stabbed them mm-hmm. and took the van it was like a whole thing like a furlough. it was maybe two or three days that they were looking for this guy yeah and i think it was like a early in the morning he was on a train and he was walking through the train, I guess, looking for a victim. And he went to the front of the train. He wanted to stab the conductor. You know how they have, not the conductor car where it's the little one in the corner, mm-hmm. where, where the whole front part is closed up. Yeah. So the conductor was in there with two cops, a man and a woman. Okay. Now the two cops saw this guy banging on the door for the conductor to open. Yeah. So he, he could stab him. And the, the cops did nothing. Mm-hmm. They didn't open the door or anything. So he turns around and he sees this guy. And he tells the guy, I'm going to kill you today. So he went in and attacked the guy, but the guy knew how to fight. Okay. So the guy basically wrestled him to the floor. And while he was doing this, he got a whole bunch of cuts to the top of his head. Like, he cut into a scalp and the skull Ooh. and everything. Yeah, it, was, yeah. it was bad. There was blood everywhere. And a fireman, an off-duty fireman, actually helped the guy. Mm-hmm. And, of course, once this guy was subdued, the cops come out and they grab him and they get credit for arresting oh, this guy. Oh, that's nice. And the fact of the matter is, they so saw what happens, all this so going who on. Takes, yeah, so who pays for his um, now this guy sues the NYPD because basically these two cops watched him almost get murdered and did nothing. They actually watched this guy walk up to the the conductor's roof. They saw him banging the door with a knife in his hand. Butcher knife. Yeah. They saw him threaten the guy and tell him mm-hmm. he was going to kill him, attack the guy. All of the shit, only after the guy was subdued did the cops come out and do something. He went to court to sue the police department. Police department lawyer said, which is something I've heard before, the police have no responsibility to protect any person. They're not there to protect you. They're there to protect property, and they're basically there to generate money, but they're not there to protect any, like, remember when it was protect and serve? Yeah. Yeah, it's not on cars anymore. If no. you look at a police car, it doesn't say protect and serve anymore. Oh. Took it off, because they don't have a responsibility to protect you. And they put this in the papers and shit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they did? 
This was a huge yeah. This I, is a I don't remember thing. any of this shit. Yeah, I think the guy's name was Joe. Oh, what the, what's this guy's name? <clears throat> it was. So then that guy, yeah, he, goes right there. So he sued the NYPD, so he didn't get anything from them. Yeah, here's the exact thing from the New York Post. Let's check it out. Same exact rider group riding through the streets doing all kinds of crazy illegal shit. Mm -hmm. And uh, I ride motorcycles, but I'm not a fan of those types of guys, you know, because it makes everybody look like assholes and yeah. dangerous and shit. It's not, that's it's, it's, it's really stuff that kids when do. they start doing the like the, the tricks the in the middle weed. of the street, yeah, yeah they just, I've seen them, yeah, they'll stop the traffic and do whatever they want. It's 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 silly, it's stupid, but. The police want to act tough and go and search for those people that did their job. But the truth is, that same exact day, and there's video of it, those people ran right through red lights and everything, and the police actually stopped for them. Mm -hmm. They would stop traffic for them. The police didn't even look at them, didn't say anything to them. And I won't ride through the city because after that whole incident now, if the police see you riding a motorcycle in the city, they'll stop you. And start running your license and run it, which is illegal. They'll run your place to see if you've done anything. Mm -hmm. But they'll stop one person or maybe two people, but they won't stop a group of people because they're scared. Yeah. So it's like we're tough guys when we're in a group. You know, I, I mean, come on. This is stupid. And the whole. And look, when, like I was saying before, when the police become police officers, they take a vow to protect the Constitution. But most of them don't even know what any of the constitutional rights are. They have no idea. So how can you protect something that you know nothing about? Mm -hmm. Like, they'll ask you questions and try and force you to answer the questions, which is, you have the right, you don't, you have a right to remain silent. You don't have to talk to police if you don't want to. You know, and there's, I mean, there's a whole lot of things that they just blatantly go over. Does that still count? What's it, the Miranda rights? Is that the, what the Miranda rights do count. Um, it's 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 like a TV and movie myth that the police have to read them to you, mm -hmm. or or you can get off. Nah, nah, you don't get off free if they don't read them to you. You're supposed to know your like you're supposed to know what your rights are. They don't have to tell you. <laughs> and they don't give you the whole. You have the right to remain silent. They will never ever because they'll try to get you to say shit. That's all I know. Yeah, and everything you say, like when a cop pulls you over in a car, the cop will say, do you know how fast you were going? And that's them trying to trick you into say how fast you were going. Uh -huh. Yeah, and when you say, yeah, I know how much, I was going like 80, or, then you just admit it yeah. to a crime. And they'll write that shit down. If they don't have their little recorder on, yeah, yeah it counts. So you don't say shit. You don't say shit, but like, nope. Nope, <laughs> nope. how can nope. I help you? 
You know, am I being detained? Mm-hmm. Is there yeah. a problem, officer? Yeah, like. they said license registrations. Give it to them. Let them do what they're gonna do and leave you. Yeah. Leave. I don't agree with a lot of this. Like a lot of these guys that they go on like the YouTube and they're like confrontational and mm-hmm. like, don't don't do that because it's not a guarantee you're not gonna get shot. Yeah. And the thing is, other ones that want to get all slick and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. cops can shoot you. You'll get away with it. Yeah. Because, you know, everyone will come and they'll lie and you, they'll make you look like a fucking asshole. They've mm-hmm. shot kids and made the kids look like the worst fucking criminals out there. So some dick in a car getting loud, yeah, it's not going to yeah. float. Just let that shit go. Oh, I was watching, um, in my haze, I saw a little bit of Seth Meyers. Uh-huh. I think he said, what did he speak about? He said, report, more people have been killed by selfies than sharks this year. Yeah, well, sharks don't... You got to go in the water to get killed by a shark. <laughs> exactly. It's not... Yeah, it's not easy to get caught. Death by selfie, I mean... And it's not because it captures the moon. Um, you know what's funny? Really? I see people with the selfie sticks. And yes, it's obnoxious. But god damn, that's an awesome invention. Because there's nothing that gets a full shot. And the shot that you want... More than like a selfie stick. Like the a, shot that you'll die for. Yeah, basically. Hey. <laughs> yeah, you know, you could go to Times Square and take a picture with the naked ladies, and you can get two instead of one. You got your selfie stick. It's You're good. <laughs> it's nice, but yeah, I don't know. I saw someone. I just, I, someone on Facebook. I have a friend of mine took a picture. Like I don't know how to take a selfie. I think that's young people. To, to, you got to be like under thirty to be able to do the selfie thing right. Look, yeah. I'm still maneuvering my way. I Yeah, I've seen your selfies it, now. It, yeah, <laughs> they've been bad, hit or miss. Just, yeah. You gotta I'm not, know a, I'm not to, a selfie person. You got to know how to work the, the MySpace magic, you know, the that magic that changes you. The the filter, you mean? No, they just like, you got to hold it. They, there's a certain way that they hold it. The camera, you mean? Yeah, 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 to make so, certain it's things. It's like an angle or some shit. The boobs have to be out, so, you know. They look extra, yeah. And then the and duck face. Duck I face. can't. I can't do duck face. <laughs> Nobody needs duck face. It's I got all braces. Good. I can't do duck face. Yeah, your braces don't show though. Yeah, but I. I mean, I have the grooves, so my lip uh, gets caught on the. Photoshop. Photoshop them out. It's funny when you start getting that involved in your pictures. You, I was just about to say, I'm like, it's not that serious that I if need you, to edit my shit. Like yeah, yeah. If you gotta Photoshop your pictures and start, no, 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 it's useless. It's ridiculous. Yeah, you had asked me, what was it? Uh, Netflix and chill. Oh, yeah. That, You've that, never heard that term- before? No. It's not new. No, yeah. Now that I think about it, like, I mean, as a, you know, growing up as a teenager, you would go over and watch movies. So, mm. yeah. But it wasn't, I guess, the term actual Netflix and chill, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. I've been, yeah, I've, been a- I've been that out of the loop that now. Well, it's cheap. Well, look, the movies are like my son, he goes out right, and he wants to go with his girlfriend to the movies, and it's like, just come watch Netflix. It's, it's too movies is like ridiculously expensive now. Seventeen dollars per person, and then per person. Yeah. you know, God forbid you get hungry or thirsty. Well, now you got chicken fingers. You have curly fries with cheese. You have nachos. Yeah, yeah, and they're all they're all dog. overpriced. Yeah, well, yeah. So you're gonna like it's Same a good the candy, you know, eighty stuff. or ninety dollars for two people in the movies, and then that's like a nice meal somewhere. Yeah, and then yeah, and then you don't know if you know some girls are really hungry and they want to go <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> you know, they want to go eat afterwards, yeah. and you know, and then yeah, like I just spent seventy dollars at the theater. You're still hungry. Yeah, and then there's still no guarantee you're gonna get anything later on. See, that's why Netflix and Chill is better. <laughs> Netflix and Chill is just about getting, you know. And nobody wants to be like. Nobody wants to seem like I'm just going over there to get ass. So you know, yeah, we're gonna watch Netflix and whatever happens happens, or if something happens, oh, I don't know. But that's what it, it's always been about. That remember the old Happy Days episodes? You put the yeah. arm over the shoulder. And, 
blow oh, into the ear. Well, well, that's when you would go to like the theater. <laughs> yeah, like you would go to the movie theater, you would sit down, you put the ar- your arm around your date and all that. Nonsense. Yeah, it was like yeah, a whole you process. You would get real cozy and stuff. So yeah. yeah. So, oh yeah, so now updated now would be Netflix and chill. Yeah, and it's cheaper. Yeah. You pay for your Netflix anyway, or. Like you have one account. Yeah, but if you're like, telling me let's Netflix and chill, I'm gonna be like, all right, we're chill. We're gonna smoke, or we're just gonna just like you look, know have some drinks. <laughs> when it comes to you, <laughs> yo, I say what Unless I mean. I mean what I say. You straight out say, let's do this. And yeah, let's just, unless yeah, well, yeah, unless I be like, look, we're gonna do it. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna have some sex. But other than that, if we're just chilling, no, we're just literally motherfucker, we're just chilling. Just yeah, chill. Yeah, a lot of people don't nah. See, and a lot of people don't subscribe to that. Oh, It'd be well. easier if everybody did. It'd be a well, whole yeah, lot easier. Yeah, there would like, be yeah, no why don't you come over? Yeah, you'll come over, we'll eat a little bit, and we'll sleep together. And it doesn't even have to be in that order. Mm-hmm. And they're like, okay, let's go. It's a lot easier than let's Netflix and chill. Then I got to finagle this into ass. doesn't really make sense. Uh-huh. Yeah, it is what it is. But nobody, yeah, everybody wants to be the roundup. Nobody wants to be straight out like, yeah, I want to get, you know, you got to get your rocks on. Yeah, that is true. Everybody needs to get it out. But well, I mean, some people some people are a little different, though. They, you know, it, they don't have to, you know, it's not a priority for them. It's a, prior, it's a priority for everybody. No, I don't, I don't think nah. I don't. I don't think everybody's like There's that. There's nobody sitting around not getting any that's not thinking about getting some. That's not necessarily true. Yes, it is. Everyone. Mm. No, I've had my moments that I'm just not, not into it. I'm not thinking about that. That's like the furthest thing from my head. Yeah, but I've had still, my dry spells yeah, but, in my moments. Yeah, but even during dry spells, it's just self release. Hmm. Like, no, I've had people sit no, there like and I tell some, me... Yo, sometimes I've, like, unplugged from both. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> no, nah, I've had people sit there and tell me, um, yeah, I don't do that. That's terrible. Like, you full of shit. You lie. You lie. I know, for some, I don't know. Some people seem like they're very, yeah, disgusted by then. It's yeah, not I don't ever do that. that. Yeah. Really? That makes no sense at all. I mean, Should be hey. your best buddy. Everybody, everybody's different. Some people are more comfortable with themselves. Some people are not. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, but still, it's you. It's part of you. You grew up with it. You know, since it was a baby. True. And if you're Dominican, you might have just grown one, but still. <laughs> From earlier, they just just happened to Yeah, wake I'm pretty up sure that's a hole you stuck a finger in or something. Came down out of nowhere. Terrible. Oh, that's just, that is a terrible thought to have lived 12 years thinking you were a girl, wearing like girl shit, and all of a sudden it drops out. You might even think that like you're broken or something, like, oh my God, I broke something. Like when it falls out. That's what I'm, th- you know, I like, like think today, can't wrap my head around You're that. walking home and you cough and something falls out. What would go through your head? What the fuck like is complete, this shit? Yeah, complete yeah. panic. I'm like, what the hell is this? Yeah, it, it makes it's. Oh my god! I don't get it. Like, was it moist up there? Was it? Is there? Was there an up there? Yeah, no. There's yeah. There was a clear up there. Yeah. Did they show pictures of like a diagram of this shit? What it looked like? Mm, they showed. I mean, they showed diagrams. Um, well, let me see. But it's not. It's like drawings. And, but yeah it's basically what was once in is now out and you gotta figure out what to do with it and that's not always an easy thing I mean what does that even look like yeah what would I, it even look like well it looks normal it's just that wait let me see well you know what it doesn't look normal because the urethra is in a different place got a little diagram you see that's regular uh-huh. And this is irregular. I guess that would be like a the clitoral bump thing, but see it's a microphallus. Okay. But you see how the, the urethra runs through an irregular guy? This urethra comes down. And what happens is the testes that are here that make the scrotum, I guess once they pop down, that's when the scrotum comes down. They call it a blind vaginal pouch. A blind vaginal Urogenital pouch. sinus. That would be where the inside is pushed in. 
So it's just tucked in. So it's something Pretty that much. is just tucked in, and then when you're yeah. 12, it just <coughs> yeah. comes out when you cough. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Well, once I guess once they drop, it pushes it out, whatever it is. It's, wow. It's amazing. I'd love to see this on video. It got to be, it's crazy. Well, there goes that thing, like you were saying, like the super clit or super... It's a micro, micro, yeah, micro, super. Yeah, it's small, and there's no, like I said, it doesn't look where the urethra comes out. Oh. So you're kind of peeing through a different hole than. Yeah. Yeah, it's terrible. So it's not even functional, or it is. Um, I, it, doesn't, it doesn't. I don't look know. Like I don't know if it's functional or not. That would be interesting. Well, with with um. With, okay. With bodybuilder woman, it doesn't get erect. I mean, it might, it, it might, you know, stiffen a little bit, mm-hmm. but it doesn't, it doesn't become like completely erect, and just not. They can't really do anything with it. You know, they it's want just attention. Enlarged. Yeah, yeah, they want attention paid to it, but you know, they really can't do anything with it. It's just there. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, basically, a boy and a girl. On until you pump chemicals through there to say what it's going to be, it's the same. Like, all the body parts are the same. They just fill out differently. It's like the molds you put in, I guess. Mm. But that, that... Somebody's got to make a video showing how this happens because it's amazing. I'm sure it's somewhere. Yeah. See, they in don't... The, world. the enzyme, a 5-alpha reductase 2 is what converts the testosterone into DHT that tells you to be a boy. And these kids they don't have it. They don't they don't react to the DHT. So it's not until you get like that super dose of testosterone in your your puberty years that everything pops out. Yeah, it's amazing. So and only in the Dominican Republic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're saying basically there was there was one person that I guess had the gene, and she had a bunch of kids, and because it was basically a closed system. Because she stayed within the family. Yeah, she was because reproducing within yeah, the family. when you go to those small islands, you'll find a lot of things that are just cousins and cousins yeah, and cousins. Yeah. Basically, yeah, you're, you're you're marrying and dating like third and fourth and fifth removed cousins and yeah, <clears throat> those genes are in there when you start mixing up those genes they become dominant then you get all this weird kind of mm-hmm. you know two headed babies so, <laughs> or two sex babies it's weird or you, you're born a woman and you're born a girl yeah. and by the time you hit puberty you realize you're a dude because it didn't help that that a lot of them come from those small towns in Spain and Italy and they went there and it was already like a closed system where they were so now you're mixing it with, you know, the, the African kids. And yeah, it's, it can't be. It can't be good at, at all. Did you see this thing I was telling you about? What is that? This is, those are those little bugs that live in your bed. Uh-huh. Mites. And that's, this is the whole thing that they're saying. Messy oh, bed, the, dust, the dust mites and stuff? Yeah, the messy bed is healthier because if you don't make your bed, it, it, airs it out and it lets the sun get to it and the UV rays kill a lot of those dust mites and a lot of the germs that would live in the bed. I remember when I was a kid I used to have to get up and make that bed right away. Like the second you got up, you gotta make the bed and mm-hmm. it does look better but it's not better for you. I know there's some type of psychological thing behind that making Probably. bed thing. But um, I mean, I, ag- I think like that is accurate because I mean you sweat I know I sweat in my sleep a lot so I don't make it right away I let it I like to let it air out breathe a little bit so yeah I hate that in the middle of the night just gonna start sweating I flip the pillow over Mm -hmm. (laughs) well I have one of those Tempur-Pedic mattresses so those things retain heat yeah I have to go like I said Saturday I have to do a I'm gonna be doing a sleep study Mm -hmm. and I don't know I'm, I'm a light sleeper, so I, I can't, any noise or anything, I can't sleep. And I'm going to be sitting there with the Bane mask on and that machine going, and you got like a thousand leads mm. going to your head. I hate, 
how they expect people to actually sleep during a sleep study makes no sense. Mm-hmm. No sense. And you see, like, on the news, you'll see B-roll. Like, they did a sleep study, and you see the person that's laying there sleeping mm-hmm. without all the stuff on their face. And you think, I could do that. But that's not what that's not what happens when you actually get there. Mm-hmm. No, nah, they want you to put on it's, it's ridiculous all that have you done a sleep study never no nah? never did a sleep study. they 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 test they check and they test how long you go into REM sleep how your breathing is like all the different levels of sleep that you're in they mm-hmm. actually have readouts of all of that stuff like how your brain is working how your respiratory system was working it's amazing what and they that's get what you're doing on Saturday yeah it's amazing what they get but the thing is, to get all of that information, they have to put so much stuff on you that you can't fall asleep with it. And like, I don't sleep on my back. Yeah. So I can't. And that's how they want you to fall asleep. They don't want you to move around. Oh, because then you might yeah, unplug you yourself. Yeah, knock the leads off, so yeah. you can't move to the left or to the right. Yeah, it's not. Again, like if you got to get up to go to the bathroom, that's another problem. Uh. And every, I mean. I, mean, I can't make you go all night without going to the bathroom. I'm yeah. old, man. <laughs> <laughs> nah, just, if I give you one of those little container things. See, guys are lucky because you can get those little container things. And no, just... those things are not as... No. I don't I... know. I hate going in a bedpan. I can't. I nah. can't. I couldn't go in well, a bedpan. Well, the whole maneuver... When I was in the hospital for my leg, they had given me a bedpan. And mm-hmm. I was like, look, man. I will risk breaking this leg again other than... You know, rather than use this bedpan because mm-hmm. just just the logistics of a bedpan makes no sense to me. At yeah, all. there's no way this is gonna work right. And then there's always like spillage, and mm-hmm. they're gonna have to do the bed anyway. It's like, come on, this is stupid. Mm-hmm. There has to be a better way to do this. Yeah, and they I guess they haven't figured it out. See, you could do that. That that could be your invention, like something better than a bedpan. Like make a bed with a toilet in it. I don't a little flap that you like, oh, nah. you slide off. <laughs> like you see, um, you you still haven't seen um, Idiocracy, right? No. They have recliners, like Lazy Boy like recliners, uh-huh. with the toilet built in, so you don't have to. Like I guess once you get home, you just sit down and watch TV and, and you do take everything a shit in the right back. Oh my god! In the, in the toilet. <laughs> everything. How, like is, how lazy or how tired would you have to be? How tired and lazy? Would look, you have to be? I have had lazy yeah i've had lazy moments where mm-hmm. where you even you look at it and like jesus christ you're lazy like this is ridiculous what are you doing those are those sad sad moments you look at yourself in the mirror <laughs> Lord. what am i doing I saw I saw part of it. Um, I like Andy Samberg. I'm I'm kind of. I didn't even get to see him. How did he do as a host? He's actually pretty good. He's pretty funny. Mm-hmm. Um, and at one point he comes on and he goes, "Boy, that Donald Trump seems racist." He goes, "Anyways," and he just goes off. Okay. <laughs> you know, he just starts talking about all this shit. Yeah, no, he's pretty. I like Andy Samberg. He's pretty. That Brooklyn Nine Nine is good. I like that show. He's pretty good as a as a host. He was good. Yeah. But I'm just. You, who was really good, was Ricky Gervais. When he came out, he was like, he didn't care whether he lost or not. And he told the girl, "Come out." He told one of the, somebody, "Come out, bring me one of those Emmys." They brought the Emmy out. Mm-hmm. And he just went and posed, and they took pictures. Mm-hmm. He said, "See, that's all I need. <laughs> that's that's all I need." I like yeah, he's Ricky the best. Gervais. It's just, it seemed like, look, I don't have anything about against, like, trannies or anything like that, but it seemed very, like, trans-centric, because, you know that show on on Amazon about the transvestite and transparent, it's called? No. Yeah, there's a whole show. I, I've seen the show, it's not that good, but for some reason, it won almost every award. So the guy, he, he, I forgot Jeffrey the actor. Chambor. Yeah, he, he won. He won. Um, I saw him actually accepting an award. I saw him accepting the award for that. But 
And I think that was a clip on some of those um like e shows or some shit like yeah. that. Yeah. Well not I think almost everybody from the show won, but it's like it won over like But he won for that part in that show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He plays a woman. No, I mean but every person like every person on the show basically won. Oh really? Like if they were on that show you came home with an award. <laughs> okay. And it's like I got, it's just a little suspicious that this is the you know, the Bruce Jenner year and there's the whole trans year. Well that's what they do every year. So they're I pushing think. you know, they're pushing that Don't whole they do thing. That? Whatever the, the theme is for that year, Not whatever whatever as, like, you know, movie or show and or whatever is, creative If you're gonna give an award and you're gonna be trans centric, I mean, there's actual transvestites who are in show like in that show Sense Eight mm-hmm. on Netflix, there's the star of the show is, is a transvestite. Mm-hmm. Like, in a, and then it was also written and directed by a transvestite. Mm-hmm. So, but no awards for them. Like, like, Louis C.K. didn't get an award, which is fucking because he gets an award every year, I think. Mm-hmm. And it was just weird. Like, a lot of people. I didn't see a lot of the stuff that was nominated. So. It was just odd. I, it, it, you can't help but feeling there's some kind of agenda there. Mm-hmm. Because like I said, I've seen, I've seen well, transparent. I mean, that a lot, not, you're not the first person to say that. I've, yeah. I've heard other people say that regarding the Oscars, too. It's like whatever is popular that year, or whatever yeah, it's a it's trend so that year, that's what, you know. And I'm kind of award show out anyway. I'm, I'm really, there's so many award shows for every, like there's a lot of back pattern. If you make that much money, you shouldn't have to get awards for what you do. The, the award is like your paycheck. Mm. You know, like you don't see... Best retail sales awards, or you know, best mailman award, or no, those are people who should be getting fucking awards, not not millionaire actors. Do you don't have enough? We also I have to give watch you, you give you an, get an yeah. award. Yeah, you gotta watch you all get patted on the back and get swag bags of free shit and go out to nice fucking parties. It's not it's not enough, really. Versus somebody who's like every day dredging a whole bunch of shit. Like mail, just to deliver yeah. your shit. I mean, you have, like, 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 you ever you get on the bus and you just see the misery of that bus driver's life on his face. He's just like, get on. And, and it's funny because uh, when I was younger and the kids would get on the bus, like, without money or stuff, like, the bus driver would say shit. And not, they don't even care. Just like, just, just get on. They just care. There's some that are very friendly. They're like, good morning, good afternoon, yeah. good evening. Yeah, those are the guys that are going to so. eventually kill everybody at the job. Nah. <laughs> They're going to walk in one day with a shotgun, like, good morning, and blast people. Not necessarily. <laughs> I don't think so. We like the beginning of Rapture for David Duchovny. Oh, I remember that movie. Oh, my God. <laughs> he just walked in there. He just, just blasting people. So he, oh, my God. He went through the whole office and just picked everybody up. Yeah, and it's like. See, those are the happy people. The people that those are. He wasn't happy. Well, the guy shooting wasn't happy. But he wasn't a happy. Those are. Happy. But you you know what? He wasn't happy to the people at work. But like working for the post office, I've seen postal workers that were psychotic. Like these people are gonna break. But to the customers, best people in the world, nicest, really? smiley faced. How's everything doing? That's so funny because at my job we have somebody like that. Like nobody on the floor likes him, yeah. and he's, he gets in everyone's face, yeah. and they don't like it. You know they don't like it because he tends to be a bit of a kiss ass or whatever. So, but they all. You know I said to one of the girls I was like, look, don't piss that guy off because he's gonna come back in here and blow everybody away. Yeah. And yeah. we're all gonna blame you for pissing him. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you. I've, I've, I always try to stay on the, the good side of crazy because look, I know when I, I know crazy when I've seen it. I've been around crazy enough to like I can feel it. I'm drawn to crazy, mm-hmm. and you know don't I'm not no. You feel that way? I feel that way too. Yeah. But, <laughs> and, but yeah, I've seen them on the street, and they're the best people to customers. Customers love them. And you look at those customers like you. One day he's gonna kick your door down and shoot you. Mm-hmm. You know, they're, 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 yeah, I'm telling you, people are, and those are unhinged people. Them people on the buses with the smile. If he's been there twenty years and he still has a smile on his face, mm-hmm. he's not in the real world. Yeah. Or he's high, high as fuck, on something. Shit. Yeah, maybe people. 
Because there's, there's no, no, there's no reason to be that goddamn happy doing a job. <laughs> Unless it's your dream job and nobody. You know what's so funny? That if you're happy, people think there's something wrong with you. Yeah, because there is something. It's not a I'm like, what fucking kind of world do we live in that when you're actually happy, people look at you like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah. Up. You're high, you're on some shit. Yeah. Everybody should be angry, grumbly. No. It's funny, I see. That's not good for people. Like earlier, you said the, the Syria, you mentioned the Syria thing. Mm-hmm. And it's funny because when you get down to it, like, look. There's, these countries are at war, and Syria is involved. And because they're at war, Syria is involved. There's people running out of the fucking country. Now, literally, yeah, they're like running. They want to get the fuck out. And it's like, are you really gonna tell these people you can't come here? Seeing as how your country is one of the countries involved in the fight in this country that's making these people run out. I uh-huh. mean, it doesn't. Like, you know what? It's like. What kind of human being, like I remember the, the the news lady, there was a newswoman who was actually kicking people down who were trying to run past her at the border. Yeah, she was tripping them. Yeah. I and saw the video. Like, what kind of human being are you that these people are trying to get away from fucking war and you're tripping them and kicking like Like, that's not... That's what I, I say a and lot. Women holding their children. She was yeah, there were kids. Sh- yeah. yeah, there was a lot of kids. I'm like, Yo, what an evil! Yeah. That is such a fucked up thing to do. And and you know what's funny? It's it's. You wonder why certain people become a certain way towards you and your, you know, your society or the way that you live, mm-hmm. but you forget conveniently the shit that you do to create that. Like I understand why certain people hate certain other people. Mm-hmm. You see it. And it's, it's, in, it's in the way that you talk to them or in the way that you treat them. Like, everybody's human beings. And to think that you're better than this other person because the imaginary line is on your side, you know, that separates your countries, it's just it's ridiculous. It doesn't make sense. Like, what kind of human being treats another kind of human being in need? Like, shit. Like, have you seen the... There was a picture of a little kid on the beach dead. Yeah, there. I saw that. The little children that were washed up shore. How do you see That's that? That's so sad. That? Like, these people are, like, desperate. They're, like, yeah. they're, you know what I mean? They're, it's, it's really weird. They're risking their children's lives yeah, to do it. And how can you be so cruel? Yeah, it's really, it's bad. And they're trying to get away from a bad situation. Because, mm-hmm. look, there's, there's one of two things that happen. Either these kids run away and get away from the bad situation. Mm-hmm. Or they live there and become part of the situation. Yeah. Which happens like you see in a lot of um, like when they have the African child soldiers and mm-hmm. and it's easy for people to say, oh, those kids are monsters. No, those kids are not monsters. Those kids are reacting to their world. Yeah. And if their world is war, they're gonna learn war. That's what they're being yeah. taught. And yeah. And you can't you can't later on say, I can't believe these kids. You know, they're prone for violence. They're evil. They're not. They they're becoming what you made them, basically. And you don't have to physically do something to someone or a group of people to be part of the problem. Sometimes all you have to do is just do nothing and say nothing or, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, you have a kid and your kid acts a certain way towards someone and you don't say anything to correct it, you're part of the problem. It's not just your kid. It's you, you know, and it's the same thing everywhere. You, you could say, you could talk to your parents about shit. Look, my father says... My father grew up in the 60s and the and the 70s, and my father is homophobic, and he says things sometimes, and it's not intentionally homophobic where you're just hateful towards everybody. It's just that you say things, and then I guess you don't realize how they sound when you say them. Like he was talking about this a new show on FX from the Sons of Anarchy guy. It's a uh, the Bastard Swordsman, and a character in the show turns out to be gay. Mm-hmm. But it was a character that I guess he was supposed to be manly because he was killing a whole bunch of people. I don't know. Anyway, my father goes, I, if I was an actor, I wouldn't do that kind of part. And it's funny because me and my mom are like, shit, you see how much do you pay these people? Yeah. Shit, pay me half of that. I walk around like Lafayette. With a <laughs> shirt. Shit. And no, I have, 
I'll be kissing every guy on the set. I don't give a fuck. Mm-hmm. You pay me enough? Yeah, I'll do it. No problem. It's not real. Yeah. It's just the fucking, it's the actors. It's not a, it's a movie. Yeah. It's not real. Just because the actor played a gay guy, I don't mean he's a gay guy. Yeah. You know? That guy was Nelson, the one who played Lafayette. He's doing real well off of playing Lafayette right now. He was my favorite. And it was a good show. character. Yeah, yeah he was, he was one of the most remember, you know, memorable characters. And it's funny because in the book, he he dies in the first book. Yeah, he's the one at the at the end of the first season. He was the one that was supposed to be dead in the car, not in that, that car. not that other, you know, the yeah. fake witch doctor lady. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hate when they change shit like that. But the, it you know, the out first well. season was very, very good. Yeah, it started getting a little crazy. I think maybe after like third season. Yeah, that's that whole. It started going. I don't know. The Fonzie effect, they call it, where someone is so famous in the role mm-hmm. that they have to keep you on. Yeah, yeah, it happens a lot. That that the Fonzie and they turn into the, the Urkel effect, but he was popular. And people liked him a lot. Oh, well, he, uh, he wasn't. Get, he couldn't let, He said he couldn't land jobs because of that Urkel shit. Yeah, because it was silly. But yeah. I mean, the Lafayette thing. It's funny because the Lafayette was a gay character, but the Lafayette was a strong character. He wasn't mm-hmm. like. Yeah, but he did. You know what's so funny? Well, he was there. He he filmed movies because he was in that movie with um, Robert Downey Jr. and Jamie Fox, where Jamie Fox is like a cello celloist that becomes homeless. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He also did um, well, the one with the butler. Mm-hmm. He was in that. And he's been in a lot, I see him here and there, a lot of, you know, little straights of video things, but not, you know, and he's still working. I still see him, you know, in trailers here and there, so. Yeah. You know, it doesn't, it didn't, I guess it used to affect, I think Denzel Washington one time, he was talking about, they asked him what he thought about Will Smith, remember he did that Six Degrees of Separation, and he had to do a scene where he kisses a guy, and they, you know, everybody had made a deal about it. And Denzel Washington had said something about he would never do a scene where he kisses someone else at the time. Really? Yeah, I wonder if he's, I wonder if he's changed his, you know, views on that. Because like I said it was a while ago. So mm-hmm. that was like, that was 90s, like early to mid 90s. Yeah. And yeah, there was still fresh Yeah, that's the, interesting, yeah. Let's, let's hate the gay, because like I said, it's a role. And sometimes the best roles, like Philadelphia was fucking fantastic. James Franco gets a lot of shit. Um, well, you know what it is? He, he, in the beginning he did, but James Franco kind of play, he plays with it. Yeah. Well, so, yeah, that's why people, yeah. I don't know. I, he doesn't care. And the yeah, thing is. I, I yeah. like the fact that, you know, he's open with it and he's comfortable with it. And it really yeah. doesn't matter. I mean, you're acting anyway. Yeah, it's yeah. a job. And, and it's funny because it's not just straight people. Because gay people have this whole thing, too, where they want to, like, claim somebody. And I know Tom Hardy is having problems with that right now because he did an interview years ago where he made a comment like he's 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 an actor, he's dabbled and but he wasn't very specific about what he meant. And to this day every I think time he, he said does, he's dabbled, he's tried all sorts of things. Yeah, but he wasn't really specific. He doesn't, yeah, yeah. And to this day, whenever they do like press for a movie mm-hmm. they try to get him to say what exactly he did, or mm-hmm. if he is or isn't, and it's like, first of all, what a does it matter? You know, a difference doesn't fucking make. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean. The guy's an actor. He's a decent actor. He makes good movies. Mm-hmm. That's all he really has to do for you. It doesn't really, doesn't really matter whether he's gay or not, or yeah. you know, like yeah, I don't understand. But it's a whole whole thing. Anyway, we're gonna come to a close on this. Um. We have a website. It's Tones Crib, T O N E S C R I B dot WordPress dot com. Uh, you can leave messages there, uh, comments, questions that we'd be happy to answer in most cases. Uh, feel free to contact us. Um, we're gonna try to, I'm gonna try to put this on um, the iTunes store and the Google store. Um, anything that'll take podcasts, I guess. And don't know how frequently we'll do it, but I don't know if it even happens. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a scheduling thing. Because like, I could do it. Look, new stories come out every day, so it's not really, it's not that hard to put some stuff together. 
what is it? It's just scheduling. For you to get here, it's not easy for you. For me, I yeah. know. I but can yeah. track it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll work it out. Okay. See how things roll. But anything, thank you for listening, if you were. And uh, right. until next time. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.